Hi guys! Hey! Welcome back to Violating Community Guidelines with Brittany Broski and Sarah Sauer. And today we're going to be talking about the Influencer to Christian Pipeline. A much requested episode. Mm -hmm. And a, I do say so myself. Yes, and a topic very near and dear to our hearts. Yes! <laughs> I love Christians. <laughs> the thing is, we're former Christians. I actually have seen people, like, we do cr touch on Christianity a lot. It's only because mm -hmm. it's a, it was a huge part of our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you experienced something for 18 years uh -huh. and you were just, like, never talked about it again, it'd yeah. be kind of unusual. And maybe you would want to talk about it at certain points, yes. especially with people that, I don't know, could relate to it. Yes. So now is the time. Mm -hmm. Um... We have a few disclaimers that we would like to go over before we actually get into it. Um, so like Sarah said, we are both, we c came from Christian households. We're mm -hmm. very familiar with the church, its inner workings, its infrastructure, how evangelicism works mm -hmm. and how it's a missionary faith and all that. We understand all of that. We don't mean to bully. We yeah. would like to say, if you have faith, if you are religious, I think that's great. I think that uh, this is a scary world. And if you find refuge and comfort in the idea of a, a, a God or something in the great beyond, I think that's great. The dangerous part is when it becomes um, a way to enforce values and a way to enforce a way of living upon people who don't subscribe to that. Exactly. Yeah. Who are not receptive to it or want it. That's kind of what we are going to be talking about. Yeah. So again... We are not bullying Christians. We are not bullying the Christian faith. We're both very well acquainted with it. And I've seen some beautiful things come out of the Christian faith. It's not all bad. We are focusing on the bad parts. <laughs> yes. um, we also just want to say that this is, in some ways, um, it's been researched and analyzed, but this is a relatively new thing. You know, like the influencer turning Christian. It's a very special phenomenon, I would say, and we mm -hmm. have a few notable examples. And, um, you know, kind of like what are the stepping stones that have been laid for these people to get there? Yeah. You know, what is that 180 flip that yeah. some of these people in encounter? So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. Um, just wanted to say that because you fucking bitches <laughs> are going to come for us. If you fucking bitches feel bullied right now. Yeah. <laughs> grow up. No. Okay. No, we will do our best to not bully. We will acknowledge the existence of cringe, though. Yes. At multiple points within this podcast episode. Yeah. Okay, here we go. We're going to get into it. I do also want to acknowledge that um, I am having anxiety, so there's mm. an ice pack on my chest. Um, but it's also just hot as shit in this studio. It is. My back is wet. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about this. Uh, Stanley included like four disclaimers, which Brittany touched on. And then he also said, like, you know, conversations online are limited. Nothing is discussed about why creators specifically become religious. We do have some hunches. I have a like a mm -hmm. kind of a huge theory or why content creators are finding God. It seems somewhat common within the accounts we follow through the macro discourse of this conversation doesn't really exist online. Along with a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, we discuss on this podcast. They simply don't exist offline. Yeah. So... I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about the rise of Christianity on TikTok. Um, so Stanley doesn't know if this is important, but he wanted to add it. So we're going to just like delve into it. Um, Christian TikTok is an explosively growing subgenre on the app. Uh, though the Christian population's decline in North America has been well documented and teens are even less likely to identify as Christian than their parents, the burgeoning of the space on TikTok coincides with research claiming about these one-fourth of believers in the United States say that their faith has actually gotten stronger during the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. Um, having all the time at home to create content certainly doesn't hurt the proliferation of hashtag Christian videos either. And also it... Like, I I'm, I want to be a little understanding because it was and it is still a time of crisis, both in this nation specifically and across the world. So I definitely understand the desire or need to seek comfort, comfort from an established, you know, religious institution like that, mm -hmm. where they have tools in place for yeah. that sort of thing. You're feeling lost. You're feeling misguided. You know, yeah. like all of those things that entice you in. You know, oh, the solution is Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's like this is such a vulnerable time yeah. in our history, um, in, our, in our current history, that I think is notable 
to mention as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, like right now, just I think everyone feels a little bit hopeless, like mm -hmm. with all the everything happening in the world, like the climate laws, all this sort of thing. And yes. so like you seek out, like you want to have hope. Right. And a lot of people find that through religion, yeah. which if that comforts you, that's totally great. That's chill. I yeah. <laughs> love that for you. Good for you. Just don't actually force it on anyone else because that's like, why would you do that? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, having all the time, yeah. So, um, also it was and still is a time of, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> While Christians are less likely present on every social media platform, the potency of the community on TikTok feels unique. Yeah, there seems to be a lot more. I, but I think that that's because, like, on Twitter, they'd probably just get, like, absolutely decimated. Yes. Um, Twitter is no place for any sort of optimism. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, Facebook, I feel like they're thriving pretty well on there. Facebook Christians slay. They do their slay. Yeah. I mean, Instagram, but also it's like, if, they're, if they are thriving, you can't really find them. They're like very much their own community. Yes. And Instagram Christian influencers are so fucking insufferable. Like, yeah. it's a holier than thou. I am better than you. Yeah. You are just not close enough to God. You are misled. You are, you yeah. know, whatever. You're not doing enough. I feel like it's such a competition on Instagram from what I've seen. Yeah. Of, you know, performative worship and performative um, closeness. Yeah. That's like, do you really feel like that? Because I've met so many people that are like, God first. Yeah. And they're the most fucked up people. Yeah. Like who are actively making fucked up choices mm -hmm. and then they just claim God online. It's so, I don't know. I don't know if you feel this way too of like, when you meet people that actually walk yeah. with God, walk their righteous path, yes. it shows, Yeah, you know, they're, they're good people mm -hmm. in theory or if they've been forever changed. Yeah. It shows, um, and I think a lot of it is performative, but that was what I was taught mm -hmm. personally um, in the church is, is you have to perform yeah. for your other Christians to prove that you are faithful. Yeah. It's fucked. I would definitely, so my theory on all of this is like the same thing I feel about my parents, where like, so a lot of people, instead of seeking therapy, find God. Yes. And so, like, my parents should have should seek therapy, but I know that they won't because in therapy you have to face yourself. And at a certain point in your life, there's it becomes unbearable to, like, look at yourself. But what church, Christianity specifically allows is that every Sunday you can ask for forgiveness. Right. So, you know, you don't feel like a bad person. But, like, what really should be happening is that you need, like, professional help and I don't mean from God, you know, that sort of thing. A different type of professional. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Not God in a suit. Not a carpenter. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. But, like, it, I think, so that's what I see, like, going on. When you talk about, like, genuinely bad people, mm -hmm. they lack the necessary foundation. Their house is definitely built upon some sand, if you know right. what I mean. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so I'm saying the people who walk with God probably also have a decent, you know, understand of being a good person in general right. if you were to take them from their faith they would still be a good person right you know i think a lot of people who just shit like just the, you know what the performativeness is just like they are people who actually need professional help it's using religion as a scapegoat almost yeah. it's like well i am perfect in his image yeah it's like well then fucking act like it mm -hmm. or at least try to that was a big i don't know one of my qualms with like all of it, just Christianity. The type of Christianity that I was raised on is that, you know, um, you should walk in his image or try to, the whole what would Jesus do thing. Yeah. He was a perfect person. So you should try to make decisions in the way that Jesus did that is honoring of your neighbor and loving to all and accepting of all and, you know, like walking with the lowest of the low. And um, that is not translated. Mm -hmm. into the practice of a lot of Christianity, especially the one I grew up with. And so it's like, I, I resent it in a lot of ways like that. Yeah. You know, it's like you are, you're using God as an escape for yeah. your wrongdoings and your, well, I'm perfect. Enough. Fuck off. Shut up. Can you just like try to be a good person? Yeah. Well, I also think it's like similar to like what, so like if you, if a lot of people are like unwell mentally and mm. they've done someone wrong, you have to go to a, a real person, like an alive person in front of you and own up to what you did. If you can be quote unquote forgiven and you when you speak to God, right. you don't actually have to go to the person. And so like it's a way to 
it's like the, I don't want to say easier. It is the easier way to own up it to is, something. It is, Without taking accountability with the other people. Right. Yeah, so I mean, that makes sense. It's kind of like, can I talk about abortion stuff? Yeah. It's like how people will fight for a fetus because a fetus asks nothing of you. Exactly. You know, but you won't fight for like the children that already exist because those children could ask you for something or ask you for more. Exactly. In a similar way to like if you wrong someone in real life, it, you have to be held accountable as opposed to if you could just choose the option to apologize to God. Right. You don't have to sp- speak to like a, a being in front of you. Right. So, yeah, it's like how it's just a. It's, it's avoidant. Yeah. It's a little bit lacking accountability yeah. on a lot of people's parts. Um, I can see how, I don't know, if good people just want to get something off their chest, mm-hmm. then maybe that is helpful for you. You know what I've never understood, too? And, and I mean, hey, Catholics, if you're out there, if you're listening, I've never understood this. Okay, if Jesus died for you, yeah, you're absolved of all your sin immediately from the moment you're born to when you die. Like, you're... yeah. Why do you then need to ask for forgiveness or beg for forgiveness or repetitively ask for forgiveness every Sunday? Like that's such a a pillar of the Catholic faith. I don't mm-hmm. understand where that comes in if me just like not under- <laughs> yeah. understanding the basics. Can you, you explain know? Catholicism? Yeah. Um, hey, guys in the comments. <laughs> but, you know, you know what I mean? Where yeah. it's like if you are made in his image and you are absolved of all your sins because he died on the cross, why do you need to... Why is that even an option? Yeah. Where, okay, I wronged this person. I did something terrible. You know, the the whole, if Hitler would have just asked for forgiveness on yeah. his deathbed, he would have gone to heaven. Huh? Yeah. It's like, I don't, what? I mean, we can talk about the Bible all day. Yeah. Like, equal sin, the fact that me stealing, like, a candy bar from someone's lunchbox downstairs same is, as murder. is the same as murder. And, like, if you just ask for forgiveness, you are forgiven. Wild. That is insane to me. And I don't think that a... I'm not going to get into it. But, yeah, that is really crazy. But if you guys yeah. understand Catholicism at all, what I don't understand is <laughs> baptism, dude. Like, oh, yeah. Is that, that's mainly symbolic. Like, uh, were you baptized? Uh, no, but my siblings were. I was. You were baptized? Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you want to baptize me in the the apartment pool? Or yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Can you tell I was baptized? <laughs> Can you tell? Yeah, you seem clean. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> cool. Clean girl aesthetic. You were just baptized. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every day's like a baptism when you take a shower. Um, I don't know. Sorry, what were you going to say? I interrupted you. No, I completely forgot. You don't I, understand baptisms? I don't understand. But the thing is, is like, we're now we're just, uh, we're not understanding like certain points in Christianity. This has turned into us once again being confused by the topic <laughs> yes, we're talking yes. about. All right, let's, I'll get back to the, the mm-hmm. research. While Christians are likely present on every social media platform, like Sarah said, the potency of the community on TikTok is unique. Part of what entices them is what entices anyone that it's easy to go viral. You can make a video and basically have no followers and have it find success on the app. And Stanley's notes are, yeah, bro, it's called the For You page. Literally the appeal to the entire app literally could be true about any topic. And that is true. And then I wrote, whoa, Stanley went off. Was this when you were high? <laughs> I was really high reading this. I thought only I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah got really high last night and made comments on some of our research. <laughs> and it's just stuff like, ooh. Oh, ooh, yucky. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, cringe. <laughs> L. Yes. Um, so this is especially appealing to Christians who view converting others as an obligation of their faith. Yeah, like I said, it's missionary. Yeah, Christianity, there's like a lot of religions that are closed. Like I know in Judaism, you're not supposed to try to actively convert people. But Christianity is very much like a, you have to convert people sort of thing, like yeah. mission trips. My parents have been on so many mission trips. Mm-hmm. I've never gone on a mission trip. Me either. Actually, no, I have. It was to, like, Atlanta one time. and that's, Not Atlanta. There was a girl. Well, I mean, I lived in South Carolina, so that was, like, a three-hour drive. But this girl, I remember, she taught me how to dry shave with uh, conditioner. <laughs> and then I, I didn't realize that her skin was extremely durable. So I tried it later, and, like, I just read. Just, yeah. like, disgusting. Strawberry skin. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I once dated a girl who could dry shave her pussy. I you I would have to go to the fucking ER if <laughs> yes. I tried that. <laughs> You'd have to dr- Uber me to urgent care, dude. Yes. I'm dying. No, but like never like any razor bump. It Holy just like shit. and I was like, what the fuck is this? That's like a hidden talent. I know. Uh, I can shave my clit and there's no bumps. <laughs> you go on X Factor. <laughs> America's got talent. <laughs> and Simon's like, what do you got? You take your pants off and you shave your pussy dry. <laughs> 
<laughs> do and then he's like, he's like, what now? And then you like smack it around, and there's it's no razor burn, no red. It's never red. <laughs> it's never red. What's it like to not have red undertones, pink undertones? <laughs> Dude, I told you, I've hooked up with girls who have like no discoloration down there, and I'm like, you're a, you're wrong. Yeah, that's satanic. My below <laughs> the belt is like a color wheel yes. for me. Yes, my inner thighs are definitely my summer foundation shade. <laughs> No, I'm... <laughs> what? Come on! Surprise, I suffer from chronic boredom, but that's the price I pay for social media brain. But sometimes I do wish I had a go-to game on my phone that could instantly inject a hefty dose of fun into my veins whenever I need it, you know? Because life's too short for a day without fun. Get a thrill whenever you need it with Slotomania, the world's number one free slots game. You'll have endless excitement at your fingertips with 170 free-to-play slot games, huge jackpots, an interactive community, and a million free coins. Oh my god. It's the perfect escape from your daily routine. What I personally love about Slotomania is the rush I feel with a big jackpot win, because rarely do I feel like I'm winning in life. Get 1 million free coins when you download Slotomania to kickstart the fun. There's nothing more exhilarating than huge jackpots, believe me, I know. Special prize and free coin rewards every day. Slotomania makes every day fantastic with engaging graphics and realistic sound effects. With added perks like free spins and free coins, there's always something unexpected waiting. When your day is feeling stale, just ask, what will today spin? If you're 21 or older, you can join millions of players around the world. Download Slotomania, the number one free slots game on the App Store or Google Play Store and get 1 million free coins. That's Slotomania on the App Store or Google Play Store for 1 million free coins. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at SeatGeek. If you don't already know, SeatGeek is a ticketing app that makes buying tickets to live events super simple. So simple that someone as simple as me can do it, honestly. We've got the app on our phones, and it's by far and away the best way to buy tickets. Whether it's concerts, baseball, football, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. With so many amazing concerts happening right now, you're not going to want to miss out. I'm talking Bad Bunny, The Weeknd, Lady Gaga, Pitbull, Harry Styles, and so much more. I personally am super excited to see Cheech and Chong in Beverly Hills in a couple days. Thank you so much, SeatGeek, for those seats. SeatGeek wants to make sure you're getting a good deal. So when you're on the app looking for... Okay, God, sorry. SeatGeek wants to make sure you're getting a good deal. So when you're on the app look for the green dots green means good deal red means bad don't worry we've got the hookup use code bcg for twenty dollars off tickets at SeatGeek. that's twenty dollars off your first purchase with promo code bcg make sure you click the link in the description to download the app okay <laughs> no i'm totally kidding it's not that dark down there um, no, yeah, not that. Contrary to what you bitches think, <laughs> yes. it's not that dark. This down is there. more a joke. Like this is like it's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, guys, don't think that yes. your inner thighs are just like <laughs> the Christians. <leather. laughs> the, the Christians who tuned in on this one to learn something. Yeah, new. zero learning zero. Yes. All right. Anyway, under that, Stanley said uh, about. Christianity being a missionary faith, Stanley said, major cringe, love getting DMs of Bible verses. Definitely continue that, guys. Thanks. Yeah, and I think we've talked about this before, like, people who, like, evangelicize. Mm. <laughs> I don't mm. know. Mm. <laughs> people who preach on, like, boardwalks, that's not effective. Nah. And I would I would feel like if I'm screaming into a bullhorn on the boardwalk and someone is drawn to me, yeah. that person is insane. Yeah, not exactly the type of people <laughs> yes. that you're, like, looking to follow you. <laughs> yes. I, I wrote a little note here where I said, I've never understood DMing Bible verses to non-believers. Mm -hmm. Like this book already has zero significance or meaning to them. So why is quoting one singular verse out of context supposed to alter their way of, way of thinking and bring them to like the light side? Yeah. Like this isn't some form of a magic trick. I think a lot of Christians think that when you hear the word, yeah. it's supposed to be like a switch in your brain. Yeah. It's just all I'm... That's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like the same with um, Ray Dunn's sort of pottery at TJ Maxx. Mm. Never do I see like a live, laugh, love mug and think, I got to really switch it up. <laughs> <laughs> we have to level up, <laughs> yes. re-strategize. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Dude, I'm not living, laughing, or loving enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to buy this. Yes. Yeah. That's the same with the Bible verses. Also, like, I mean, if you've been raised super Christian, they pretty much, like, a lot of them have lost all their meaning. Yeah. Uh, I do appreciate, though, when people, 
I don't really get this shit. But like you get people that DM you verses and you hit them back. Yeah. With, with contra- a Bible verse. Yes. That is such a skill. Yes. Such a power. <laughs> My favorite one to just reply with is not like a response. It's just like he was hung like a mule or something like that, <laughs> which is in the Bible. <laughs> Explain this, Christian. <laughs> Or like you're like a dog who returns to its vomit. (laughs) That's a Bible verse too. Yeah. There's a lot of shit in the Bible. If you're going to cherry pick the Bible. There's so many crazy verses in there. Yeah. Yeah. He like genitals like a mule is like literally a Bible verse. Wild. But yeah. um, So yeah. You've you haven't gotten like any like Bible verses or anything like that. No. Because I feel like a lot of that comes from men who th- are trying to fuck you <laughs> well i don't know f- f- on your account that men because you all those are from men that are like yeah usually well, i would a- never fuck you well that's because they're like homophobic yeah <laughs> which is crazy because homo like homosexuality wasn't even in the bible till like the 20s <laughs> it was originally talking about men lying with young boys yeah and like pedophiles were like oh we can't said guys can we like switch this up yeah yeah Tired of being shit on. (laughs) We shit on like the gay people. Yes. Yeah, I think that's, um, I've never understood that. You know, like trying to convert people with just the Bible. It's like, who gives a fuck? Actually, if you weren't raised in a culture to treat the Bible like the gift that it supposedly is, it has no significance. And it's just like that. If you're preaching on the boardwalk, I'm walking by you, dude. I'm walking right by you. <laughs> also, it's like a lot of the books of the Bible were written by like people who were like farmers or like shepherds. Mm. Can you imagine like if you went to like MIT and you tried to cite a source and it's John the farmer from Nebraska who said like, you know, if an object is heavy, it'll fall on the ground. You're getting expelled. <laughs> yes, you're, you're done. You're, you're gone. You're getting beaten with a computer. Yeah. <laughs> it's MIT. You're getting shot behind the building. <laughs> yes. That is so awful. <laughs> that's okay. Moving on. Mm-hmm. Um, that's part of why one of the best represented subgroups is evangelicals, a group that emphasizes, among other things, the need for personal conversion and the importance of even evangelism. Mm-hmm. The definition of the term evangelical is something of a moving target. By the fact that the same teens on TikTok making content gave mixed answers about whether or not they identify as evangelical. Oh my God! Wait, this reminds me of. Have you seen the TikTok of people going to like uh, what's that school in Salt Lake? Oh, the University of Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> Mormon University. <laughs> Mormon, go Mormons. U M. <laughs> yes, um. But no, no, no. What is the? What is? Oh, it's like um, Bo Derek or something. Oh fuck me! What's it called? Salt Lake City. Stop, uh, uh. <laughs> Mormons. <laughs> what is it called? Uh, university. Brigham Young. Brigham Young! Young. <laughs> <laughs> you, she knew. Bo Derek. Bo Derek. <laughs> yeah. hey, shout out Bojack Horseman. Yeah, but uh, they went to Brigham Young and they asked people if like gay people should have rights. And someone's like, I've never really thought about it. Um, <laughs> you're going to have to come back to me. You're going to have to give me time for this one. Dude, but imagine like if, if someone came up to me, though, do you think straight people should have rights? You're like, um, listen, I don't want to get involved. Right. Yeah. It's right. not really like, it's like, do you sound, you sound crazy right now. I think that they're scared by how politicized it is. They don't actually hear the question for what it is. Yeah. Do you think X people should have rights? Yes. It should probably be like a, yeah, most yeah. people should have rights. Exactly. I don't understand. <laughs> It's wild. Dude, the laws in Salt Lake are insane. Mm. You can only get like one drink at a time. You can only wear jean skirts <laughs> down to your ankle. Sorry, just being Mormon phobic. Playing soccer is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> in a floor lane jean skirt. <laughs> wait, wait. Weird laws in Utah. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, you can't have like coffee. You have to drink like diet coke or something. What? Yes, <laughs> you got him on a strictly DC diet in <laughs> yes. um, Utah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Ten weird laws in Utah that'll leave you scratching your asshole. <laughs> you can't throw rocks somewhere else. You have to bury your pet promptly. I feel like these are just bogus small laws. Yeah, I don't know if this is you know where it's like <laughs> in Connecticut you can't ass fuck a dog. It's like. I wasn't even going to do that. It's up to the state to decide. (laughs) Just, hey, state's rights. (laughs) What? (laughs) Imagine in Utah, your dog immediately dies and you have to throw it in the ground. It's like, what the fuck? Um, Whale whale hunting is illegal in a landlocked state. Yep. (laughs) Can't go to SeaWorld and shoot the whales. 
<laughs> Only in Utah. Everywhere else is fine. <laughs> All right, chill out, Ahab. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Ezekiel, <laughs> sit. Captain Ahab is from Moby Dick. That's good. <laughs> yes. Um, no sheep herding down the streets. These are, yeah, this is like just bogus ones. I want to yeah. look up Mormon laws. Whatever. All right, so let's go back. Because Mormons, okay, so let me just say this for everyone at home who doesn't know the difference. Mormonism is a more extreme version of Christianity. So um, we, we're not really well versed on it. There's a lot more like well, rules to it's, it. It's still an Abrahamic religion, but it's. I would not say it's close to Christianity. They have different prophets, different This is the thing. When we say books. Abrahamic religions, that includes Judaism, which we're mm-hmm. very much excluding in this conversation. Well, because they're not... You know, they don't subscribe to literally any of the shit. Yeah. And uh, Mormonism doesn't acknowledge Jesus really either. So uh-huh. I don't think that that's, I mean, you wrote up Mormonism Mormons. laws, like, they, Mormonism believes in Jesus. But, really? But Joseph is the, or who's their fucking, I've oh. seen the Book of Mormon. <laughs> the musical? Yes. Okay. Um, what about Joseph and, like, Mary? Who is the Mormon God? <laughs> who's the Mormon God? <laughs> oh, his name is Russell M. Nelson. <laughs> He's the current president and prophet of the church. Russell M. Nelson, 17th president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Who was the first Mormon prophet? Joseph Smith. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, moving on. This is not about Mormons. <laughs> yes. Um, you want to go? Still based on their videos, a significant, a significant percentage of the most followed Christian TikTokers appear to align with the four primary characteristics of the movement as outlined by the National Association of Evangelicals. If they don't always want to label themselves accordingly, politics may have something to do with that. Yeah, it's like how uh, if you go on a dating app, a man will say he's a moderate, but that really means that he's a conservative. Yeah, yes. exactly. Is he doesn't want the connotation associated with thinking that way, but he still thinks that way. Yeah, he's going to play devil's advocate with your uterus. Um, mm. uh, the political connotations aren't unfounded, and they highlight tensions playing out in the American church at large. About eight in ten white evangelicals voted for Trump in the 2020 election. Following, I know, following a pattern that's held since the Reagan era. White evangelicals have tended to support Republican candidates, while Christians of color have tended to support Democratic candidates, according to Robert P. Jones, CEO of the Public Relations Research Institute. Public Religion Research Institute. Public Religion. P-R-R-I. Pry. For a generation more aware of and eager to condemn racism than their parents were, the color line within evangelicism can be troubling. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's T. We never, ever, in my 20 years of going to a Christian church ever talked about a racial or um, societal struggle Mm -hmm. between different like subcategories of Americans. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. we never, ever addressed it. So I grew up for the Mm -hmm. majority of my life not thinking it was a problem. Yeah. Ever. And it's like that is... The church is, in a lot of ways, a an information pipeline. Mm-hmm. You know, you get your perception of, you get your worldview, because yeah. religion is a worldview yeah. from the church, and uh, that was never mentioned to me. Yeah. And I'm white, so I never lived it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> it's It was wild for me going to college. Mm-hmm. My first roommate at Texas A&M was a black woman, and she told me, because um, we had some, we still do have some black frats at yeah. A&M. They're very small, and... Um, they're very close knit. And that was my first ever exposure to that, to that. And I thought it was so cool. And she told me about even in the last five years when I was there. So this was I, I started at AM in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, probably this was from like 2010 to 2015. There were racist incidents at my school yeah. of like girls wearing Confederate flag earrings and like saying slurs to other students on campus, like racially motivated incidents. And her telling me this and me being floored. Yeah. I was like, not here. She's like, yeah, bitch, here. Yeah. And I was like that. I don't want to blame the church for that, but the church has a lot to do with why I thought the way I did. And mm-hmm. it should not have to be black people telling you that yeah. they are they live a diff- in a different world, mm-hmm. you know, than than how I was raised. And I was so like embarrassed. Yeah. I was like, I don't, I've never heard of this. And my initial reaction was like, no way. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. It was so. That a college was so shocking for yeah. me. I don't know. No, yeah, that does make sense. Like, it makes sense why also the church wouldn't talk about it, especially if you go to predominantly white churches, where yeah. it's like, 
um, you would have to like acknowledge your past, similar to like why people turn to religion in the first place. Exactly. Like what exactly why people would have to look at all the systemic issues they've caused. And you think about the how, church has caused. Yeah, and how racism and, you know, capitalism are so intertwined and a lot of you know, Christians did like vote Republican where like you think about like gerrymandering where that yeah. like divides like black and white neighborhoods. So you can, you know, send like you can make more income off this area versus yeah. like other people are like they don't get as many resources like it is. Everything is racial in America, especially you would have to really like take a long, hard look at yourself like white evangelicals to like realize the damage they've done. And that's why they turn to God instead of therapy. Right. So it, like makes sense. But yeah. Being raised in, like, a military household, we moved around a lot, and it was crazy to see, like, um, like the differences in demographics. Like, I remember we did live in Hawaii from, like, 98 to 2001, and I remember at school we were taught, like, a lot about the Hawaiian culture. Cool. I knew we did have to, like, do a hula performance, like, every class did, which I thought was, like, a very normal thing to do. Then when I moved to California, it was, like... A lot of um, people who are Hispanic and then white kids, so that was like another like way I was exposed. And then when I moved to Beaufort, South Carolina, it was basically segregated. Like I had to go to like Beaufort Academy or something like that, and it was like all white kids at the private school. That was so wild. And so that that was the first time I saw like that there is still like very much a divide, or like yeah. and also as becoming a teenager, as becoming more conscious of like like racism in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And then I went to high school in Northern Virginia, which is right next to D.C., very, very diverse. Mm. But I think seeing South Carolina and, like, especially the church that we went to in South Carolina, very much, like, um, like happy-go-lucky, like, lighthearted, no, no hard feelings. Like, it just has to be, like, you're a good Christian. And, mm -hmm. yeah, it was really – so it's really crazy. Like, and again, college, like, really opened me up um, yeah. to, you know, what a lot of people's experiences were. Right. You know? And it, I've – don't want to give off the impression from either of us that like we weren't aware yeah i mean of, we were of discrimination or anything like that until we were what 18 like yeah. that's not true yeah. it was i think the the uh degree mm -hmm. of it was a bit shocking when you're not under your parents wing yeah that was that personally for me where mm -hmm. i was like oh this is actually a lie. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I've been told is a lie. Yeah, I mean, and our parents, pro like, I mean, I, my parents actively were like, you know, nothing is wrong. Right. You know, exactly. like, we dealt with racism, racism in the 60s, and they're white, so they say that, and they believe that because they only reap the benefits of right. being white, you right. know? So we are kind of, we were, we were aware, obviously, of racism and discrimination, you know, before we were 18, but we didn't, like, realize the true burden. Yeah. In a similar way, we sound like idiots, like how we described in previous episodes where a man and, you know, gets a wife and has a daughter and suddenly he realizes women are discovering empathy. Senti yeah, yeah, sentient beings is kind of what we're you know, saying. <laughs> it's a bit similar. Yeah, yeah we, we just we're we were ignorant and now we understand. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, what was the on. original thing that we were talking about? The original thing was um, kids our age are more eager to condemn racism than their parents were within yeah. the church or, or as a Christian to speak up about it. Yeah. And it's also, I mean, Christ Christianity, I don't want to make mass generalizations, but in my experience, is the, the church is the worst perpetrator of, I don't see color. Yeah. We're all brothers and sisters. Yeah. Uh, yes. Maybe you should see color. You should see color at some maybe you should point think. because you that means you're erasing like a lot of what people go through. Yeah. You know. We're all equal in the eyes of God. We're not, we're not all equal in the eyes of the law. Yeah, in and the eyes of the gov American government and uh, the eyes of society. So yeah, yeah, it was it was very much that. It's like I don't care if you're black, white, purple, or zebra. Yeah. I, d hey, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, red flag when you say That's that. That's when by you know the you're way. about to hear something really racist. <laughs> it's like oh my a God. key indicator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, whether for that reason or others, many Gen Z evangelical creators seem wary of being defined by a political party, which is what you were just saying. Yeah. They're like, uh, it's too political for me. Yeah, we're centrist. Yeah. Um, they often sidestep explicitly political content on their pages, although not for the issue of abortion about which they make many, many, many videos. Yeah. Luckily, I don't get a lot of this shit on my For You page. Really? I don't get pro or... or 
anti-choice, pro-life, yeah. Republican shit. If I do, it's people making fun of it. Yeah. So I never really encounter these type of videos. It is so hot in here. It is so, so hot. Yeah. Both of these ice packs are pressed up against my tits and they've completely melted. Yeah, just warm liquid. <laughs> these are going back in the company freezer. Yep. I feel like I'm breastfeeding. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's it's totally fine. Yeah, um, they do talk, like we said earlier, the reason why it's easy for a lot of people to talk about abortion is because you're speaking for something that cannot speak for itself. Exactly. And that's the same reason why people go so hard for animals' rights as well. Right. You're, it's an innocent creature that can't speak for itself, can't ask for anything and follow up other than food and shelter. However, if you want to like speak for the hundreds of thousands of kids in foster care, those people are going to ask you for stuff. Right. They're going to ask you for your time and for your money. And so, like, why and not? And that's too much. So the animals and fetus, I mean, you should care about animals, yes. But, like, animals and fetuses, if people go a lot harder for those two topics, or uh, as opposed to human rights, that's when you can probably make a pre- like, pretty safe assumption that they're kind of Christian yeah, as well. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Or it's that weird, like, empathetic for the wrong things. Not the wrong things, but very strange things. Like, what, what do you mean? Empath- like, when people are, are, like, way too into, you know, like, save the seals that are being clubbed yeah. in Antarctica. And it's like, I think that's great that you picked that to, like, really ride or die for. But I feel like there's a lot other uh-huh. pressing like that. It's like, why do you care more about animals than like kids mm-hmm. being lost and abused in the American foster care system? I mean, you could definitely care about a lot of things. You can, but when that's like, when you go on their profile and that's all you see, I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking <laughs> out of my ass. You know, where it's like, why is that? But, it? Uh, okay, it kind of makes you, it's like, yeah, like if you go on this person's page, they're like advocating for baby seals and they're you're like, like oh, come seals. on. Yeah. There's people starving, like, here. I'm, I'm like, there's kids in Africa, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So what's your fucking problem? Like, I mean, you can care about one thing, but I understand, like, yeah. Um, so although TikTok is enabling evangelicism in new ways, it existed in different avenues before other social media, TV, radio, newspaper. Did you grow up watching Joel Osteen? We didn't grow up watching Joel, but we did go to church every Sunday and Wednesday. Wednesday, too. I went to Awana. <laughs> Anyone out there know what Awana is? I had to memorize Bible verses. Um, I think it was just what a way to that? get our parents out of the house. Wait, what? What is that? I want it's just like a Sunday school for like Wednesday night. Uh-huh. And you go and like you meet all the cool kids. We just called that youth group. Yeah. I mean, we had youth group too. <laughs> our youth group was Wednesday night. Yes, and it was mainly an excuse to like go see your crush. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I smoked weed was with my pastor's daughter. <laughs> 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 Yeah, the pastor's daughter is usually, or son is usually, like, the most fucked up person yeah. you've ever met in your entire the life. Sickest, <laughs> coolest yes. kid you've ever met. Yes. So slay. <laughs> um, okay, so we wanted to talk a bit about um, the tendency to lean a bit conspiracy theorist mm-hmm. um, in the specific subculture of TikTok Christians. Yeah. Um, so there was this article that came out. Or someone interviewed someone named Evelyn Juarez, um, and she creates a TikTok claiming the tragedy of Astroworld doesn't sit right with her. I think anyone with a working heart and brain would think that Astroworld doesn't sit yeah. right with you. Yeah. Yeah. But hers was uh, a bit more imaginative. Oh. She claimed it was about the supposed satanic symbolism of the set. They're trying to tell us something. We just keep ignoring all the signs, reads the TikTok caption, followed by the hashtags, hashtag wake up, hashtag witchcraft, and hashtag Illuminati. Juarez, a 25-year-old in Dallas, L, Texas, (laughs) is a typical TikToker, albeit a quite popular one, with 1.4 million followers. Many of her videos reveal an interest in true crime and conspiracy theories. The Gabby Petito case, for instance, or Lil Nas X's devil shoes, or the theory that multiple world governments are hiding information about Antarctica. One of her videos from November suggests that a survey sent to Texas residents about the use of electricity for critical health care could signify that something is coming and the state government knows it. This is uh, just paranoia at work. Yeah. This this is just paranoia. And again, Christianity is like, uh, God said this. With source, believe me. And so Trust like... Trust me, bro. <laughs> yeah. So like, obviously that... I feel like conspiracy theories would, it's a perfect climate, you know, perfect storm. It definitely is. And the sh- bullshit about conspiracy theories is that there's no hard evidence against it other than common sense. Yeah. You could say anything. Yeah. And someone would be like, well, 
you know, have you ever seen him in the same room? Yeah. It's that sort of shit. It's like, no, dude. Yeah. But why would you even think about it like that? That shit of like, it's satanic. Mm -hmm. No, how about it was just poorly planned? Yeah, I think like a lot of people don't realize how paranoid they actually are. Yes. Like think about like if you're talking to a guy and he doesn't text you back for a couple hours, your mind is going through like 20 different scenarios of like he doesn't like me anymore. He yeah. thinks I'm stupid. He's annoyed with me. I'm, yeah. I'm not the mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And this is just amplified because now it's like, you know, what's happening in the world. It's not interpersonal relationships. Mm -hmm. It's like what is the government doing? Right. So it's like. Their paranoia is just off the charts. Yeah. Her beliefs are reminiscent of many others on the internet. People who speak of bad vibes, demonic spirits, or a cosmic calamity looming over, looming just over the horizon. One that the government may be trying to keep secret. Juarez says she was raised Christian, although at age 19, she began to have a more personal relationship with God outside of organized religion. <laughs> and Stanley adds a comment here that says... L. <laughs> yes. As an increasing number of young people do, many of them work out their ideas in real time online, which I want to do an episode on. Yeah. The idea of having, of growing up publicly online, yeah. posting your every thought. But on top of that, using the internet as a form of therapy mm -hmm. or a personal diary, which both you and I do. Yeah. I want to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, we use it as a diary, but we don't start conspiracy theories. Yeah. <laughs> Other than my butthole is black. <laughs> <laughs> not a conspiracy yeah but i mean yeah it is kind of crazy like how they work this out in real time online you can see like the evolution of their thought process right. in their videos and how it gets so clickbaity yeah. towards the end of like you're gonna want to watch this mm -hmm. it's like do i yeah but then also when you put out those, those paranoid beliefs you find people with those similar paranoid beliefs exactly. who like reinforce what you're saying exactly confirmation bias that's yeah. all fucking tiktok is tiktok enables that shit too if tiktok was only scientists commenting pretty much all of the shit would be debunked like immediately yeah but yeah <laughs> a, a TikTok only for scientists. Yes. <laughs> it's just Hank Green. Yes. <laughs> um, they may talk about manifesting their dreams and faceless sex traffickers waiting to install tracking devices on women's parked cars, which happens. Some might act almost as prophets or shamans, spreading the good word and guiding prospective believers, while others might just lurk in the comments. They might believe all or only some of these ideas. Part of the draw of internet spirituality is that it's perfectly pick and choosable. But more than anything, they believe in the importance of keeping an open mind to whatever else might be out there. Mm -hmm. My mom is this. My yeah. mom is this to a T. Yeah. Um, it's this whole idea of your third eye mm -hmm. being open, even though it's like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Like you don't. This is a world that gets so scary because when you when you frame everything like that. Yeah. Of well, keep an open mind. Yeah. That's that leads to so much misinformation and so much imaginative thinking and you get caught up in this like in that like yeah you, oh and you find someone else that thinks this too and oh well you must be right because now there's a Facebook group with a thousand people in it. It's yeah. just like it gets so dangerous. Mm -hmm. Um and then you see things like the January sixth incident. Yeah. You know, it's like when enough people are so misinformed that they now think they need to take action mm -hmm. on something. It's just a very scary thing. I don't know. No, that is exactly true. I agree with you. Totally. Joseph Russo, a professor of anthropology at Wesleyan University, discusses religious conspiracy theories online. Call it the religion of just asking questions, yeah, or the exactly. yeah, or the or doing your own research. Exactly, that's fucking QAnon, dude. Uh -huh. It's that. It's do your own research. Google it. I know this is like a stupid question to ask because I pretty much know the answer to it. It's like it's crazy, like how a lot of Christians or these people will interpret the Bible as fact, but mm. then also suggest that a lot of passages are like. Um, like analogies yeah. or like well, they didn't mean it literally yeah like it's like if so it's like i don't know how you pick and choose and if you're the person picking and choose what is literal and what's like <laughs> right yeah it's like then I, I don't really trust what you're saying and, and i don't trust your ability to make uh -huh. a balanced decision yeah like fucking einstein's never like you know it's a it's an analogy <laughs> Like, it's, you know, you're like, this is an actual fucking yeah. scientific formula that you came up with. Especially when it comes to Christianity and, like, the Bible and things of life and death. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it was a metaphor. Yeah. Oh, well, you're not supposed to actually stone your wife. Yeah. But gay people should go to prison. Yes. <laughs> like, what? 
Uh, I think what's like crazy, I mean, this does, so to touch on what we talk about a lot, escapism. So I'm going to talk about like the kids who, the people who become Christian online. I can understand, again, if your home life or what's happening inside of you is not ideal Mm -hmm. and you want to escape into the internet and feel better about yourself. A lot of what happens, though, is for most teenagers who are feeling some sort of turmoil, turn to the internet and they find like therapy. Like they find Mm -hmm. like, you know, these therapy videos because that's like that's everywhere, you know, Mm -hmm. and they find like you you're valid. Your parents are crazy. You're not, you know, weird for this. And so then a a, a portion of those kids seeking out answers do get diverted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once again, can, like f- having faith and hope and not actually having to face what is wrong with you internally is does feel good for a lot of people, right. you know. And so the example of the people that turned like to Christian influencers, like one of them was is I'm not I don't want to speak on it, uh, a gay kid. And so if you are live in a Christian household and you feel like, you know, bad that you are gay and then your parents hate you and if you come out, they're going to kick you out you know, then you turn to God and you just like, you don't actually have to like address the issue, which mm-hmm. will suck. You know, like I know it, it does, it does make sense that a young kid wouldn't want to like come out or like talk to their parents, especially if your parents are bigots. But so I think that's what happens with a lot of these influencers who are like, cause there are multiple examples of ones that are gay who were like gay icons mm-hmm. and then they became Christians and everyone's like, what happened? Mm-hmm. And it's like, they're trying to escape what's hap- how they feel in their body mm-hmm. and instead of being diverted to therapy or resources they were diverted to christianity it's it's preying on that vulnerability yeah and that weakness that mm-hmm. these kids experience of like feeling lost and feeling unwanted and feeling the lowest yeah. that they've ever felt and then some christian f- swoops in and says have you heard the good news yeah you know and it's like if that has offered should we say their name, Lo Anthony? Yeah. I've, we were talking about Lo Anthony in that example. Yeah. If that has offered him some form of peace. Yeah. That's all I ever hope for anyone. You know what I mean? Is like mm-hmm. if you can navigate this fucking life with even an ounce of peace, good for you. Yeah. The part where it turns dangerous is if you are now telling other people how they should live. Yeah. Because you have found solace and refuge in this faith. Yeah. It's like, at what point does it turn into, okay, well, this worked for me, so I'm going to tell you guys how you should be living now. Yeah. You know, it's, that's the wild part. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to be empathetic when it gets to that point. And I think that it's really a sad situation. Yeah. When w- what you were just describing, it's just weakness. You yeah. know, it's just feeling like it's you against the world. And sometimes the world wins, you yeah. know, and, and it's a very sad thing. Um. And yeah. so I don't want to shit on Christianity, but it's like, is that the best thing mm-hmm. for that person? Yeah. It's like a, if you're in your, if this is like, I, I don't know how to. So I'm from a white family that's not really that close and culturally, it's not a lot about a community. So like when I have like people ask me like who are younger, like how do I come out? I'm like, do, does your family mean like a lot to you? Like is community and your culture like mean a lot to you? And if they're like, yes, yes. Or um, I'm like, do you want, like, are you currently living in your family's house? And they're like, yes. I'm like, I don't think that I'm the best person to ask advice mm-hmm. from because I was already out of my parents' house. I don't give a shit about my family. And like I have really no like tight community and I feel like those are huge factors in a lot of people's lives when they come out. Mm -hmm. So like when I think of like low Anthony types, you and I know how scary Christianity can be. Mm -hmm. There was, we went to one church in California where um, one of the Sunday school teachers was talking about how he kind of agrees with family annihilation, which is where a dad will kill his entire family. What the fuck? And we, we went to that church for like a little bit. And so like, that's the type of people like if you're surrounded by that type of people in your church a low anthony situation does make sense oh it's just kooks yeah like i did like trigger warning (laughs) in the church in south carolina there was like this gay kid um who unfortunately he did kill himself and but he was like the worship leader for like the youth group oh my god and they said like we're not gonna host his funeral at the church because not only is he gay but he killed himself which means you're not going to heaven and so, like, again, a low Anthony situation makes sense where if you're terrified of people like that, rightfully right, so. Right, right. 
the only thing which is, is which does suck about having a public platform is that if you now shame others for that, um, I un understand that you're trying to deflect attention from yourself, but also you are hurting others in the process, yeah. and that's what we're trying to like talk about, like the hang up, like where it gets weird. Yeah. Yes. That is so. It is that it, if you are so clearly struggling internally, and you have a platform. Yeah and you're spewing that kind of stuff because you're being fed that behind closed doors, it's yeah. so weird. Yeah. It is weird. It's really, really unfortunate. So they're moving along. Is this a Western thing? Perhaps it's all because of the Puritans. They were the ones, after all, who uh, consecrated the American. I thought consecrated means, like, when you fuck after getting married. Consecrate the marriage? Yeah, consecrate the marriage. Oh, consummate the marriage. <laughs> Defecate the marriage. Defecate. The American. Yes, <laughs> okay. The American legacy of individualism, piety, and hard work at the expense of all else. Or maybe it came out of the recurrent phenomena of Protestant led great awakenings that have peppered U.S. history since before it was a country. Um, social movements that preach the importance of one's personal relationship with God outside of organized rituals and ceremonies. Mm -hmm. It was the idea that you could perfect yourself, your health, and your circumstances, explains Mary Wren, an economics professor at the University of the West of England, Bristol, mm -hmm. who studies neoliberalism and religion. Good for her. You would have, you would have thought on this. Yeah. Um, this is therapy because she says the idea that perfect yourself, your health, and your circumstances. Escapism, your circumstances, your health, your mental health. Like it's crazy. Like it, God gives a lot of people a guidebook, but it doesn't help them unpack their trauma. Right. You know, sort of thing. Where like I know you talked about your mother's a Christian, which the way you describe your mother makes a lot of sense that she would be Christian. Mm -hmm. Um, my parents, like, I'm not saying that the white, my parents are, like, scientists, like, actual, like. Your parents scare me. <laughs> they're, like, my mom was, is a doctor, like, my dad programs, like, he does, like, big shit, like, where, but they're Christian scientists, and they believe in evolution, but they don't believe, like, that gay people should have rights, but they don't. They also acknowledge that the world was created 10,000 years ago, but they also believe in evolution. I just don't get it. And so you're like, and this is the power of mental illness. My parents, it makes sense why they are so mentally ill, but if it's so much easier for them to accept that evolution happened in 10,000 years for them to look at themselves in the mirror and be like, I am a narcissist. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Because narcissists are shame avoidant, and it would make sense that they would believe, to me, an outright lie. Right. Then look at themselves. Well, reflect. It's, it's that, yeah, and it's what we were talking about earlier in this episode. Of yeah. It's just avoiding any form of self-accountability. Yeah. Is that you can turn to God, and God will make it all go away. Mm -hmm. It's like, of course you're going to pick that, dude. Yeah. Who wouldn't? And I think that's where it splits. It's like, what is your intention with religion? Because right. we're talking about people who intend to use religion to like pervert what's ever happening upstairs, you know, or what they've done to people. And mm -hmm. then there's a lot of people who use religion to truly become better people and find purpose in their life. Which feels like a few. It yeah. feels like the minority. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's pretty sad because Christianity in, in like the textbook definition of trying to, in your life, walk like Jesus did mm -hmm. is such a, should be a beautiful notion, you mm -hmm. know, of like Jesus hung out with prostitutes and the lowest of the low and his disciples and, you know, like he, he healed people and, and he was unafraid to join the outcasts of society. Yeah. And that message of love and acceptance is a beautiful thing. It is very rarely ever mentioned mm -hmm. you know that jesus was a brown man yeah. who lived in the middle east yeah like no one i don't know it's so even when you bring that up to like when i bring that up to my parents they roll their eyes dude when i bring yeah. that up to my grandparents i'm like you need to start thinking of the bible as a historical document yeah instead of the end all be all which is what we're taught to think yeah and that's so i don't know because the bible can be the worst weapon mm-hmm you ever been you hit with a book? Huh? You ever been hit with a book? Uh, no. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> yes. You know, this is a separate thought. Whenever I see a tow truck, I imagine, like, <laughs> Jesus being crucified on the back of it. Oh, I see that, too, yeah. Yeah, because it's like the, but that's, it's just an invasive thought. Me, too. Like, well, how do you see a cross? A yeah. big wooden cross? How are <laughs> yes. you supposed to not think? God. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, but yes, I understand what you're saying. Um. Anyway. 
It's during periods of economic crisis that we really see it start to flourish, says this economics professor. Because many of the churches where it's preached can be attended virtually. The messages travel much farther. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to have believers when you don't have to physically be in a church. The pandemic kind of exhibited that. The portability of the message is what makes people believers in the prosperity gospel, even when there's not necessarily regular churchgoers. It also explains this weird trend in social media where we're constantly living through crisis after crisis and it leaves people reeling. Yeah. So it would make sense that, you know, there has got to be some form of fucking escape. Like there's got to be some, some answer. Mm -hmm. And so I think we saw that really during the pandemic when it was just like, Oh my God, does it get any worse? Yeah. So I I get this and I get also it it lends itself to the TikTok thing Mm -hmm. is the rise of tiktok during the pandemic yeah and oh my god this is such a what a stage to spread the good word yes it's just like i get how all of these factors lined up perfectly to create this influencer to christian pipeline or just a platform for christian influencers yeah you know cola brandt fucking who are the girls cody and noel make fun of girl defined (laughs) they're girlfriends you know uh, yes (laughs) yes girl Uh, defined yeah you know it's like of course there's a platform for all these people because Mm -hmm. it's it's People are lost. Yeah. I get it. As do I. Um, so these binaries espoused by internet spirituality, good and evil, demonic and angelic, abundance and poverty are reinforced everywhere in culture and not only in the context of religion. The demonic is one of those very superficial distinctions that really has a lot to do with who's your customer, who are you trying to frighten. Oh, period. Yeah. Who it are can... you trying to frighten into believing what you believe? Yeah. You can you can scare a lot of people yeah. <laughs> online. Uh, it can stand in the kind of generalized force of evil in, ever, in a very effective way, regardless of what the specifics are, explains Rousseau. It works on people not necessarily because they've read the Bible, but because they watch Harry Potter or read Tolkien <laughs> or play Dungeons and Dragons. It is this sort of fictionalized, like, what is a demon? Yeah. What is something that's demonic? Yeah. Uh, where is the popular TikToker joined the platform during a particularly difficult period in early 2019? She was forced to drop out of college and began suffering from depression. Like I said, like I said, should have sought therapy. It makes sense that she pivoted to God. Yeah. After that, her husband was in a bad car accident. I needed somebody to vent to, a therapist. Uh, she says, though she was raised in a religious household, her beliefs differ from her parents and that she feels less connected to the ideas taught by the church and more to Jesus himself. I've noticed a lot of the younger generation looking for God in a different way, she says. They move away from their religious background and have an actual relationship with God. Did you just pop into the influencer to Christian pipeline? Me? Yeah, is that you? The purple icon? Oh, last man Stanley popped in. I was like, I thought you were already in here. Hey, Stanley. Stanley's in the dock. Stanley's in the chat. How do we contact him? It's like a seance. Where is he? Is he at the top? Stanley, where are you in the dock? Call him a slur. <laughs> I only can say one. <laughs> um... Oh, wait, there he is. I found him. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm moving. Hey, Stanley. Hey, Stanley. I wrote, hey, Stanley. Speak to me. Oh, he's there. he already moved on. Ugh. Anyway. All right. Stanley actually wrote a note here earlier um, that this may play into the conversation of the creators we're talking about later and how they may have used social media as that outlet and that collaborating with Jesus later in their content creation. <laughs> it's like not collabing with Jesus. Collabing with Jesus. <laughs> yeah, guys, sick new collab with Jesus dropping tomorrow. Mm. Be sure to have my post notes on. <laughs> Lipstick swatches with Jesus. <laughs> Trixie Cosmetics X Jesus. Yes. Um, I also earlier we skipped over a part that I wanted to mention. Um, spiritual trends proliferate much like cultural and political ones. In fact, the latest iteration of New Thought's founding principles is inseparable from the internet. Russo, the anthropology professor, notes that as social media has become the dominant cultural force in our society, which is scary, Mm -hmm. ideologies are spreading between people who may have vastly different beliefs and backgrounds, but who show up on each other's feeds and relate in new ways. I think that I've talked about this before where it's like we're exposed to so many cultures and backgrounds and cool fucking things because of this phenomenon And it could be such a force for good and such an educational and enlightening form of, like, sharing media. It's just not. Yeah. (laughs) Like, a lot of it is just this shit. Mm -hmm. People just like, here's why I think abortion is uh, murder and you should go to jail. Yeah. It's like, okay. 
Good stuff, guys. We could We're be really. We could be so much smarter, and we then we, every single time we choose not to be. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, me though. Sorry, like if I have the, <laughs> if I have the option to be, like lay in bed and be a doofus versus like go out in the world and like cure cancer. Oh, definitely. I'm yeah. gonna doof it up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just doofing it all day. <laughs> yes. I understand. Like, so I understand to some extent. I wouldn't like start a conspiracy theory out of my own paranoia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, Juarez, this girl who loves God on TikTok, her TikTok comment section is proof in itself. She says, people have been like, yo, I can relate to this more than what I've been taught. Her approach to spirituality echoes many beliefs common in certain sects of Christianity that occult practices shouldn't be messed with, for instance. Or for instance, she doesn't engage in manifestation because she says, humans don't always know what's good for us. I've dated a bunch of guys that now I know I shouldn't have, but at the time thought they were the man of my dreams. You ever prayed over a man? Um, not recently. <laughs> have you ever prayed? What do you have you ever prayed over? What do you mean pray over yeah, a man? I used to pray for a boyfriend in high school. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I used to treat God like he was fucking Santa Claus. Yes. Can I please, God, please? I want like this James Avery bracelet. Did you leave out any cookies for him? For God? Yeah. No. So that's why you didn't get your prayers answered. Well, I tithe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Did you better. tithe? Yeah. At like a, a high school job? Big thing. No, at my church, it's a big thing in my family to tithe. No, I mean, I know my family tithes, but I didn't know if you as an individual tithe. I, when I got my first job out, out of college, um, I lived with my grandparents for a bit while I was looking for a place to live, like on my own. Mm-hmm. And they were gracious enough to let me live with them for a bit. And I would go to church with them every Sunday. Um, and my grandpa tithes like solid, like yeah. good money. Yeah. Um, and I felt very obligated to i didn't feel called to it wasn't on my heart to tithe yeah but it was like ah, i feel like a dickhead if i don't mm-hmm. so i did like twice and yeah. i was like this feels i like can barely feed myself yeah like i don't have the means to be giving money to the church i made 120 dollars in two weeks at limited two let me give away 12 dollars. literally god that's so smart of me that's a subway sandwich yes <laughs> that's one meal you're sacrificing yes. i don't know so moving along to this girl named Abby Richards is a 25 year old dif- disinformation researcher who creates TikToks about how conspiracy theories spread online and who regularly works with scholars to debunk and contextualize harmful myths. Now, what is the difference between disinformation and misinformation? Misinformation is a woman and disinformation is a doctor. <laughs> Dis- disinformation is these nuts. Yeah. <laughs> She's watched how chaotic current events, the Astral World tragedy, COVID nineteen, the confusing broken job market, have driven louder conversations around yeah. spirituality from TikTokers, no matter where they fall in the ideological or political spectrum. Yeah, I think our internet spectrum. Um, there's a collective <laughs> sense that the world is ending, whether it's climate change, whether it's the rapture, the return of Jesus, wealth inequality, a satanic worship, or other people's vibrations are too low. So true. Yeah, the rapture, or you got low vibrations. No, his vibes are, like, off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's the only nonpartisan issue. Uh, when enormous swaths of people feel as though they should have no power against evil doing, they have no power against evil doing, she argues, they tend to opt into narratives that provide a simpler answer as to why the world is terrifying. Right. Yeah, with the case of Astral World, the organizers didn't do their due <coughs> diligence, and they prioritized profit over the health and safety of humans. Period. And that is a lonelier, grimmer thought to sit with than Travis Scott be- began being a demonic villain right yeah dude it's but that's the crazy thing is like it obviously the crowd crush is like a huge fucking issue Mm -hmm. and that's like a very it's it's a horrible thing that's happened in the past but these people instead of like looking at past historical examples are just like this is demonic yeah mark twain once said that truth is stranger than fiction Uh uh-huh and it's so true because like we'd rather believe that there's some great other that's a big thing in, in religion, too, is, like, there's this other yeah. that we can blame. Oh, the devil tempted me. Yeah. The devil made me do it. Yeah. I was tempted and I was brought to the lie. You know, I whatever. And it's not just, like, you and your natural instincts. That's a lack of accountability. The exactly. Devil, the devil made me do it. No, you are weak. N- yeah, you just made a shitty decision. You cave to your, like, chemical brain chemicals. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. We'd rather blame this other than, you know, this, just acknowledging the selfish, apathetic ways of, like, a few people that put on this dumbass concert. Yeah. You know, like, that is, this was blown up into this huge thing, a tragedy, mm-hmm. surely. But to start inciting this whole new level of 
panic yeah of like will this happen you know this happened because yeah. he's a devil worshiper yes. what the fuck are you talking about dude yeah. it's like this was just a poorly planned tragedy mm-hmm. exactly it's so and you can't argue with people who think like that you can't because yeah. they're always going to be like well how do you know well yeah it's like the same as like arguing with the narcissist like yes. a lot of people i'm not saying all these people are narcissists but like if you are avoiding shame or you don't want to like reflect or you physically are incapable of reflecting mm -hmm. they would rather believe the lie a hundred percent of the time than level with you right you know like i i realized like at a certain point it's going to be impossible it is impossible to talk to my mom about any sort of self-reflection mm -hmm. and in a similar way it's it's going to be impossible to talk to these people because their brain physically will not accept like what is truth right. if the truth puts them in any sort of discomfort. Right. You know? Uh, yeah. What a way to live. So it's easy to point to QAnon, which has been argued in itself its own religion as the worst case scenario of internet spirituality. QAnon appeared to be led by a mysterious prophetic figure dropping vague omens and references to a coming battle of good and evil before over time, becoming increasingly likely that Q, the supposed top-ranking official under President Trump, was actually just the guy running the message board. Despite the fact that none of Q's prediction have come true, it barely matters. The roots of QAnon have already been seeded in American culture and politics. Mm -hmm. Many believers now use the same fear-stoking online rumor campaigns to cast anti-racism as liberal propaganda or mm -hmm. abortion as murder and will certainly evolve to espouse the next reactionary ideology in the culture war. Didn't stutter the entire time reading that. Hey. Mm -hmm. It's so scary, though. I know. It's all... That whole thing was true. It's well, just like they have created this new reality that they are so comfortable living in yeah and and it's this understanding almost equivalent to like the christian rapture that one day one day the truth is going to come out yeah what the fuck are you talking about dude yeah get back to work mm -hmm. <laughs> which is like you know it's just paranoia and it, like enough yes. paranoid people come together and it's like really really dangerous I'm thinking about the people that I've dealt with in my life that were exceptionally paranoid and they were the most terrifying people to be around right. because they thought of all these scenarios and these ways to like hurt me because they thought that they were being attacked. And again, it's uh. a form of mental illness where you need to talk to a specialist. But then again, they'd rather just do the easier routes yeah. of what if, you yeah. know, definitely. Mm hmm. But just as in mainstream religions, it's impossible to judge a system of beliefs based on its most extremist or violent adherence. Sure. I don't think there's any pacifists in QAnon. Yeah, I wouldn't think so either. I think yeah. QAnon as a whole is pretty <laughs> offensive and scary. Can you imagine like a tab? It's like the rational side of QAnon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Even then you're like, what is that? Could that mean? Okay. <laughs> Believing wholeheartedly in illogical or unexplainable things is part of a person, uh, part of being a person and not necessarily a bad one. Although it's perfectly reasonable to view the current state of the world and remark that things do not seem to be going in a very positive direction. Mm -hmm. That total destruction is imminent, whether it comes in five years or 500. Many of us still cling to the arguably illogical hope that good, whatever your idea of it, will prevail. Yeah. Um, Debatable. <laughs> do you think what do you think the world <laughs> do you think the world is good or evil? I think that humans are innately evil. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why things like religion exist in the first place is because we, for some reason, are naturally sub submissive and subservient. And we, we seek a higher power to serve, whether that's a king, whether that's a landlord. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not that, but, you know, like. I'm on the ground worshiping please, our landlord. Please let me live here. Please fix the fridge filter. He's gone. Oh, God. <laughs> but. You know, it's it's like we crave direction mm -hmm. and religion fills that void for a lot of people is that it, it, it is the moral signage and guideposts that we so badly want. Mm -hmm. It teaches us how to live. It gives us a rule book. And I don't think that religion is innately bad, but I do think it's innately flawed because it's man-made. Yeah. If God is perfect, religion is man-made, so it's flawed. So what's the fucking point? Yeah. You will never be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I understand the idea of like trying to live in a godly way. But at the same time, why not just like be a good, try to be a good person. Try to be as good as you can. Mm -hmm. Like I think that that is, we've talked about this before too, of like atheists are some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Yeah. Because it's this sort of backseat nihilistic perspective of like, we're all going to die, nothing matters. Just, yeah. Can I help you with anything? You're like, mm -hmm. do you need help? Are you okay? It's like, I don't know. Some of the meanest fucking people I've ever met in my life are Christians. Yeah. I don't get it. 
Yeah. So we're going to talk about the influencers who became followers of Jesus Christ, yes. like our main examples. So there's, uh, you know, we have Wo Vicky. Uh, some of you might know Wo Vicky. <laughs> The, she was recently Jesusified. Jesusified. Good for her. And I'm gonna say, um, just off of. Oh, hold on. What the fuck? Brittany is playing something, and I don't know where it's playing <laughs> from. Anyway, this is Will Vicky. She's a Christian now. Okay, so Wo Vicky is like this white rapper girl. It was so cringy, but I'm gonna say for this one. I don't think, I do acknowledge that she may be mentally ill, mm. but like, I think it's more of a rebrand, you know what I mean, than an actual turn to God. Again, I'm not in her soul, mind, or therapy sessions. Um, I think it's real okay. for her, because yeah. all of her content now is about this. Yeah. Where it used to be like, I got money, mm -hmm. whatever Wo yeah. Vicky used to do. And she is like the bad baby type to know that people are watching her because they're so intrigued and they're they're mad at yeah. her. It's like she knew that and she capitalized on it. And now it's like I genuinely think she's seeking God. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. What a wild thing. It's always the most unexpected people, I feel like. Mm -hmm. This is her talking about how she's single because God wants her to be single. So good for her. Uh-huh. We also have, like, um, Staten Harry, who I personally have never heard. Oh, yeah, Staten this Harry. Guy. So Staten Harry is this young boy who was, like, a super huge, like, Lady Gaga stan. And he was, like, very much queer, if you know what I mean. Like, and so, I again, what we were alluding to with, like, Lo Anthony, like, if you're, he seems to probably still live with his parents. And if this is a safety thing, mm -hmm. I understand why he is doing this. But he made an extreme 182 God. Again, he is a child, so I'm not going to, like, rip him. I understand why, especially children who are influencers, pivot so hard to God. Definitely. If Yes. And then we also have um, Lo Anthony is who we were talking about. Uh, this one is wild, honestly, because he used to be so gay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and like he he shifted things for a long time. People yeah. loved Lo Anthony. Mm -hmm. And it was the weirdest shit ever. That picture he posted. This is what I'm saying. Like, it's so just out of the blue. And and you're very right. You know, it's like we never know what's going on behind closed doors. We never know what's going on in his personal life to, like, why he made this decision. Mm -hmm. I personally think that these two examples are for safety reasons. Um, the uh, I'm the J O oh, whoa, Vicky girl. Probably just, like, I don't know. Wanted to hang out yeah. with God more. This is him now. Yeah. He's I'm, always just like, you need to repent now. I don't want to talk about how sad um, conversion therapy makes me. Yeah. So sad. But there's also some other notable examples. They weren't necessary. I mean, they a lot of these, like I'm the J is a TikToker. Who I'm the J was the craziest shit ever when that came out. And she yeah. was like, guys, <laughs> we're oh. like, you're kidding, right? Yeah. Like, you're, this is a joke? She was very much not. And then she... You converted to Christianity. It's really interesting to watch. And then we have people who started off as Christians, and then their Christianity got more, I want to say, severe. Marcus Johns, Cola Brandt. Yeah. Cola Brandt was always Christian, though. I think it just came out more when Vine ended, and he became, like, a family man. And so you want to see, like, a family channel with, like, Christian values and, like, a yeah. wife and a son and daughter or whatever. Yeah. I used to love Marcus Johns on yeah. Vine. He, he was funny. He was my favorite dude i yeah. loved him and then i started watching his youtube videos way back in the day and just like kind of the way that he interacted with his wife was so christian yeah <laughs> like so like i man you woman yeah you cook you homemaker me man yeah and it was like I know that he loves her mm -hmm. and she loves him, but it's such a an antiquated style of romance. Yeah. And it's it, it it is a weird internal cognitive dissonance I have because in my mind I still sometimes think this is marriage. Yeah. This is a healthy, openly loving 
godly marriage. Yeah. This is what my parents want for me. And this is what I should want for myself. And then I watch it and there's something that just makes my stomach turn a little bit. Yeah. About how he talks to her like she's a baby. Yeah. And how he doesn't really trust her to do things on her own. He has to be with her and, and he teaches her how to do things. And it's like, this should be sweet, but I just take it as kind of condescending. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe I just hate men. No, I think wait, so uh, in your TikTok that you posted the other day, like you're trying not to become a misandrist. I think the more again, like you said, the more you learn about the world, the more you see men and you more you see racism and the more you see all these issues for what they really are. Yeah. So like similar to how like when you went to college, it was like night and day. Yeah. I think like these types of people who find that type of content endearing are very much living like how you were before you right. went off to college. Right. Where it's like very much like a sheltered mindset. Yeah. Of, yeah. So it makes sense. Like, I feel like if you were to watch it maybe a year ago, it had been like a little bit more fine. But you watch it today and you're like, and you can see these things. You're like, this is not OK. Yeah, it's like I wouldn't want that for yeah. myself. But it's this weird thing that I feel pressured to say to be like, well, if they're happy. Yeah. But it's like, oh, she deserves so much more than that. Yeah. But who, I'm not. It, it's it's that thing of you don't know better. Mm-hmm. Leave them alone. Yeah. It, I, you're just as bad if you're if I were to be if I weren't myself and I was just a commenter just a a consumer of Marcus John's content and I was commenting on his wife's vlogs you know you really are you really comfortable with him like yeah you know what I mean it's like just putting that seed in her head I didn't need to do that she was in a happy marriage well I mean there's I mean there's no problem with you know putting a seed in someone's head because a lot of times like I mean it is helpful like a lot of not all these commenters like have a negative intention when they're like hey dude may- there's something wrong right like we talked about with when connor was on the podcast like someone pointed out like some like a speckle in his eye and was <laughs> like joking that he's like you know it has a disease but we have seen tiktoks where like someone has actually found out that they have skin cancer right because a doctor commented right like a lot of women post about their stories on tiktok of like maybe they're in a domestic violence situation and someone comments like dude that's actually like i was in that too and here's some resources right. Be, not all commenters like have this like negative intent and yeah, if you malicious, were malicious yeah critical intent and i trust your brain that you seeing their relationship and you know how a man should treat a woman in a relationship i trust your judgment if you were felt like it's necessary to comment hey dude you deserve better than this sure if you were just going on like a random couples like vlog from like paris and you're like you're reading too much into what he does and you're like i think you should divorce him he didn't open the door for you at the you know something right that would be like totally unwarranted but i think Yeah. yeah it's a weird thing because it's like especially as content creators you're choosing to put your life online yeah you're opening yourself up for criticism period yeah we do it anyone with a fucking check mark does it and it's like You have to be prepared for that, but at the same time, know your place as a commenter and as a Mm -hmm. creator, you know, in that weird, undefined relationship. It is so fucking weird. Which episode coming, by the way? Mm -hmm. Parasocial relationships. We definitely want to talk about that in the future. Yes. Um, Anyway. I think this has been a wonderful discussion. I think if you find comfort and safety and hope and religion and it does make you a better person or someone who, like, is not hurting other people, then Mm -hmm. I'm really happy for you. It makes sense. The world is going to shit. So if you just need some sort of hope, I totally get it. Yeah, to help you sleep at night. Mm -hmm. I get it. I definitely get it. Because what's the opposite? Is that better? You know, being plagued with the issues of the world, weighing heavily on your chest at night? Mm -hmm. It gets all-consuming. So, yeah, definitely understand. And definitely coming from that background, I see I have... been privy to some instances where Christianity has been a beautiful thing you know and and I've seen people come together to uplift their community and to uplift uh, an individual who's struggling with maybe a disease or we used to like donate um, school supplies to like inner city kids and stuff like that where you're making a difference in the community which is what it's all about Mm -hmm. it feels like that's very rare it yeah, is such a rarity now. It's all the fucking bullshit Christian Christian discourse online yeah. about women's bodies and about guns and about it's like that. Is this really yeah Christianity? Yeah, so, it's an interesting topic. Let us know what you guys think. Let us know how you feel and how Catholicism works. Yeah, what is um, uh, what's what's the deal with Mary? 
Um, all right. But, I've always had that yes. question, though. You guys love Mary. <laughs> she, <laughs> she slays. But thank you guys so much for listening to this. Um, this has been another episode of Violating, Violating Community, Community Guidelines. Guidelines. Make sure to like and subscribe on the YouTube. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Leave us a comment. Leave us a funny story. You guys are so crazy. Yes. Um, also... We're going, we're going on tour. We're going on tour. Woo! Uh, tickets go on sale August 2nd. So Sec- maybe by the time this comes out, they will be on sale. Mm-hmm. Be we- sure to get them. We're coming to Florida, Texas. The Northeast. No- New England? I don't know where New England is, man. It's, um, yes. New York, New York apparently isn't New England. No, it's not. But we are going to New York. Going to New York. And then also the Midwest. Yeah. So, uh, everyone on the West Coast, sorry about it. You snooze, you lose. Yeah, right. you snooze, you lose. You shouldn't have lived there. <laughs> yes. We'll All right. see you in the future, though. We will. We this is the first tour ever, um, but we will do more in the future. So, if you can't come now, oh well. <laughs> Guess what? We got free YouTube videos <laughs> yes. for you guys. So keep watching those. All right. Thank you guys. Love you very much. Love you too. Bye. Yeah.